Joey McGuire, Texas Tech head football coach with us. Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke will be here in a second on 365 Sports. Let's start with your jacket. Yeah. In honor of inside the jacket. Oh, yeah. Coach Leach. You know, I always, I always uh, go back um, and, and talk about uh, different coaches that have had such an influence, uh, not only on college football, but you and I both know. I mean, you've seen a ton of Texas high school football, and you probably can't go a Friday night without seeing some kind of influence with Mike Bleach's offense. And so um, didn't know him really well, but I feel like I get to know him more and more every day being at Texas Tech. And so I just wanted to show respect for Coach Leach and um, – Man, Howard, Darren Lovick, the uh, guy that does a bunch of incredible mm -hmm. coats, he did this for me for Media Day. Coach, you are entering the season uh, in year two, which is year one, you kind of learn what you're not supposed to do, right? Yeah. A and then you can move on. How much different do you feel in year two running the program? Uh, you know, it still goes back to mm -hmm. everything we believe in. But, mm -hmm. you know, familiarity, like even today, knowing what to expect, mm -hmm. you know, last year, uh, didn't know what to expect. It's absolutely incredible. Um, excited for the guys that I brought, you know, because we brought brought some new guys. We could have brought the same guys minus one, but wanted to, to for those guys to experience it. But I think more than anything, knowing what we're getting into, but we still go back to, you know, caring about our kids, loving them, and making sure we're waking up every single day, and their best part of the day is when they see us. What was that like to have? And I know you're focused now on this year, but – given your journey from high school to the college ranks and yeah. then to becoming a head coach, as the streamers and confetti are falling in Houston and you've got your fans going crazy, your players celebrating, um, just what was that, that moment like for you as a coach, as a, as a person, and just knowing the hard work that went into all that? Man, it, it was really incredible. Number one, um, to be in Texas doing that, being in RG um, and being able to do that in front of that fan base. I mean, I told our players all week long, um, this was going to be like a home game. And, you know, they were like, yeah, coach, yeah, coach. And then when we stepped off the bus to make that walk into the stadium, um, I kind of waited for some of them, and they were shocked. They were like, coach, you were not kidding. And so it, it was really big. Um, you know, we, we have such an incredible fan base, and, and we have a hungry fan base that uh, really wants a success. And, and uh, we didn't play in the stadium that we wanted to play in, um, you know, in December, but we definitely – uh, we're fired up to be a part of that Texas Bowl and, and be able to play Ole Miss. So are you the team you were at the end of the year? I know carryover doesn't always right. work. You're a different team. But are you who you were at the end? Is that now who Texas Tech football is going to be or, and or better? You know, we had we have 18 starters coming mm -hmm. back that played in that, you know, that started that game. And so the experience being year two in the system, uh, being year two in the culture that we're trying to build, um, I think we have an opportunity to definitely be a better team. Um, every coach that feels like they have a good football team, one thing they probably are all going to say is we got to stay healthy. You know, I mean, it's one of those deals that um, the times whenever I was at Cedar Hill and we made really good runs, uh, if you go back to 2019, if you go back to 2020, one, being at Baylor, they, those were really healthy teams. You didn't have a lot of guys miss reps. And so it's really important that we stay healthy, but we feel like we have a good football team. You mentioned the galvan, the galvanizing of your fan base and how um, excited they were. And, and look, the, the support that you've got coming in, you know, every day you hear a new story about something going on with, you know, out, you know around your program and growing. Was between Coach Leach and you, were they not like using all the clubs in their bag for what is clearly a, a very, you know, border to border, huge fan base yeah. in the state of Texas? Well, you know, I, I think it's important. I mean, you, you guys know me. I'm a Texan. Mm -hmm. I ain't never been anywhere else. Now, mm -hmm. both of my kids, one's in New York and one's in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, but I haven't been anywhere else. And, mm -hmm. and I understand uh, this state. I understand what's important to uh, Texas Tech and, and, um, you know, being able to coach in the Big 12, uh, being at Baylor was so big. And so I think um, having somebody understand that and understand their history and appreciate the history and and uh, really build on that uh, help bring the fan base back together. Um, I think it's a little bit different. Uh, I heard Mac Brown say one time that Texas was like a box of BBs, and, <laughs> and it, they had been dumped out at one point, and his job was to get all the BBs back in the box. 
I don't know necessarily if that was us, but it was to an extent. You know, you sometimes whenever you lose an icon coach, there's a splinter there um, between the fan base, and it was my job to try to bring everybody back, and we're continuing to try to do that. Uh, as y'all know, winning helps that, yep. and uh, so we were able to do that last year, and, and we're going to try to do it again. How excited are you for just uh, Tyler Shuck uh, to, to be healthy, to yeah. – the way he closed the season, um, it was, I mean, your quarterback room, everybody had to, it was all men on, or all hands on deck last year. Um, so to have that experience for he and Barron, I know Donovan's gone now, but just kind of your thoughts on that overall grouping and how much what happened last year could help you as far as this year goes. Well, you know, that's, he, he's a huge uh, piece to the puzzle of, of staying healthy, you know, because um, if you look at him and, when he started games, he's he's I think he's eight and one as a starter at Texas Tech. Um, he's a pro, man. He the way he prepares. Um, I sent him a text, and and uh, the Baylor fans will really appreciate this. But I sent him a text, and I said, "You remind me so much of Terrell, Bern Terrell Bernard and Jalen Petrie." And what I meant by that, and what I told him was, I've never been around two players that prepare harder for games, watch more film, and study more than they did. And that's why they were able to play at such a high level. And that's how Tyler is, man. He is a pro. He comes in every day. Um, he spends a lot of time with our offense skill guys. He spends a lot of time with the young quarterback, Jake Strong, you know, trying to bring him along, um, uh, learning the offense. And, and then he and Barron, it's, it's great to have such a competitive room that there is fire in that room, knowing that they've got to go out every day and compete, um, you know, to be the best version of themselves, but also be the starting quarterback at Texas Tech. You also kind of have to tell Jake, like, hey, be ready just in case because – or do you have maybe another option you could you could go to? Well, you know, it's one of those deals we – you look at it, I think Iowa State was the only team in the league that didn't have to play their backup mm -hmm. right. because of injury. And so this is a very competitive conference. It's a very physical conference. Um, you know, I, I listened to everybody yesterday, and, and Sark said it. The one thing that people I don't think really understand is how physical this conference is. And then when you add the new teams, it got even more physical. Um, we've all seen BYU up close. That's yep. a physical football yep. team. And, and so I think, you know, everybody's got to be ready, um, you know, to play, you know, at every position. Final thing, is it easier to be chasing uh, or is it more fun to be the one being chased, or is that also more difficult? Because people now are not underestimating Texas Tech football as you enter the year. Yeah, you know, I, I think maybe after game one or two, even last year, like I always uh, – Bill Parcells says this, um, you know, you are what you put on tape. I think good football teams put good things on tape. Um, there are some bad plays, no doubt, but overall the effort that you play with and the style you play with. And so – um, I don't know if you sneak up on very many people, uh, especially in this conference. There's no – I heard Dana say it. There's no layups. No I mean, every yeah. single mm -hmm. week you are playing somebody that's got great coaches, they have great players, and they, they're coming in to win a game. And so I think it's really important. But at the end of the day, I would much rather have the expectations of win than not. I mean, Absolutely. I definitely think that's a good word, and, and we expect to be a good football team this year. Well, and you, like you said, you got a lot of people back from a great finish, so the momentum right. is there. Uh, I know you got to go to another appointment. Thanks for your time. It's always great to see you. Love what's inside that jacket. That's going to be an emotional night. Dana Holgerson, no like, yeah, they picked that because it's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cliff, Cliff gets to yeah, come back. Yeah. That's his bye week, and so that's that's uh, yeah. why we picked it. But I think it's really cool that Dana's yeah. going to be there. Yeah, he was emotional about it, too. No doubt. Uh, Joey, thanks, man. Appreciate right. your time. Love you guys. You yeah, know it. Thank you all so much. Joey McGuire, Texas Tech head football coach on 365 Sports.